Welcome, welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Listen to that. Listen to that energy. Listen to that warmth. Wind chills today are near zero in New York. And I want to thank my audience right here who braved this cold, <laughs> came out. It's cold out there. It's did cold. it, dug down, found that extra yeah. gear. Get into it. To be here tonight. With it. Came out and came into the Ed Sullivan Theater where somehow it's even colder. <laughs> Here's what I like about this weather. This is sincerely comforting in a way because it is January 11th. It's supposed to be really cold. That makes sense to me. And that's the only thing that does right now. <laughs> Look at COVID. Remember, we, we just needed to take it seriously for what? Three to six weeks, something like that. Then it'll be over. That's going on two years ago. <laughs> Then we thought it was over after the giant peak last winter, plus we had the vaccine, but then Delta came around at the end of the summer, into the fall, and that was terrible. And then, then, then we all thought, oh, we'd be good by the holidays, and then Omicron came a knocking, and now I don't know what's going on. Because the United States reported 1.5 million new infections yesterday. That is terrible, but kind of sweet that we all gave each other the same thing for Christmas. <laughs> Now, admittedly, 1.5 million is a staggering number. But everybody's saying if you're vaccinated, Omicron is very mild. Well, okay, but if that's the case, then why do we have a record-breaking 145,000 COVID hospitalization with experts predicting a peak in the 300,000 range? Soon there's going to be almost as many people in hospitals as there are TV shows about hospitals. <laughs> but CDC Director Rochelle Walensky explain that the, the, the numbers aren't as bad as they may seem because at some hospitals, up to 40% of the patients who are coming in with COVID-19 are coming in not because they're sick with COVID, but they're coming in with something else and have had the Omicron variant detected. Okay, sure, but even if people aren't coming in for COVID initially, the hospitals are still overflowing. That's like saying, uh, technically, up to 40% of the people who drowned on the Titanic were already wet because they were in the bathtub when the ship went down. <laughs> so, not so bad. <laughs> not so bad. <laughs> you want to know how sick of this pandemic we all are? Check out this headline that CNN thought we all needed to hear. Five reasons you should not deliberately catch Omicron to, quote, <laughs> Get it over with. Well, obviously, you shouldn't deliberately catch Omicron. And should I? <laughs> I mean, all the other late-night hosts are doing it. <laughs> I'm starting to think they had a secret sleepover, and I wasn't invited. <laughs> now, I know, aw. Oh. Now, it seems ridiculous to purposefully catch COVID, but according to one doctor, the idea of intentionally trying to catch Omicron is all the rage. Yes, getting Omicron is super popular. I hear it's dating Pete Davidson. <laughs> but he's got, he's got that BDE, that, that big delta energy. <laughs> now, but <laughs> that's what I hear. That's what I hear. It's got to be something. It's got to be something. But I got to get a neck tattoo. But <laughs> as... As appealing as the notion of intentionally making yourself sick may be, <laughs> CNN has some pretty good reasons to avoid getting the COVID, including you could get long COVID, you'll stress the healthcare system, and don't mess with Mother Nature, adding, she's been trying to kill us ever since we crawled out of the ocean onto the land. Damn you, Mama Nature! Damn you to hell! Damn straight! I, you know what? You know what? I was... For years now, I've been against global warming, but now it's just payback time. <laughs> I'm going back to plastic straws. <laughs> now, come here, you damn turtle. Come here! <laughs> There's no actual turtle here, by the way. <laughs> now, there is some help on the horizon. The White House just announced that insurers will have to cover eight at-home virus tests per month. Eight per month. So, one for every new variant. You got to go out and buy the test yourself, which may not be easy, because with skyrocketing demand, rapid antigen tests are hard to find. And even when you do find them, you must first battle the self-checkout machine at CVS. <laughs> no, no, you're an unexpected item in the bagging area. <laughs> you are. What? 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 
Do I want a bag? Of course I want a bag. What am I supposed to do? Carry this tube of Crest to my car clutched in my butt cheeks? <laughs> of course. <laughs> the big danger is that COVID has mutated into a political issue. And today, things got ugly on Capitol Hill, where Dr. Anthony Fauci was testifying in front of his old nemesis, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, <laughs> seen here... <laughs> seen here sporting his signature hairstyle, Fettuccine Alhedo. <laughs> during... Mm, mm, mm. During a hearing... During a hearing about the federal response to Omicron, Senator Paul accused Dr. Fauci of attacking other scientists who opposed COVID lockdowns, and the good doctor had had about enough. Do you really think it's appropriate to use your $420,000 salary to attack scientists that disagree with you? The, the email you're referring to was an email of Dr. Collins to me. If you look at the email... That you responded to and hurried up and said, I can do it, I can do it, we got something in Wired no, magazine. No, no, no. I think in you usual did. fashion, Senator, you are distorting everything about me. Get him, Fouch! Come on! Take off the gloves. Take off the gloves and a mask. <laughs> I, I have your results, Senator, and I regret to inform you, you've contracted my boot in your ass. <laughs> Dr. Fauci was just scrubbing in. He went on to tell the committee the dangerous consequences of a sitting senator spreading lies about him. What happens when he gets out and accuses me of things that are completely untrue is that all of a sudden that kindles the crazies out there, and I have life that threats upon my life, harassment of my family with obscene phone calls because people are lying about me. That's just terrible. Dr. Fauci should not be getting obscene phone calls from violent crazies. He should be getting them from lonely singles who saw his in-style magazine cover. <laughs> Hello, doctor. Do those novelty socks go all the way up? <laughs> but Dr. Fauci used the scientific method to figure out just what Paul was up to. So I ask myself, wh why would Senator want to do this? So go to Rand Paul website, and you see fire Dr. Fauci with a little box that says, contribute here. You can do $5, $10, $20, $100. $10, so you are making a catastrophic epidemic for your political gain. In response... A, a pretty damning accusation. In response, Rand Paul sent out an email. Dr. Fauci tried to smear me by saying I'm profiting from the pandemic. Prove him wrong by donating $10, $20, or $100 today. But if there's one thing... If there's one thing out there more contagious than COVID, it's stupid. Because Rand Paul was joined in his dumb, dumb attacks on Fauci by Kansas senator and man who bought his veneers by the foot, <laughs> Roger Marshall. Senator Marshall asked Fauci about Fauci's financial disclosure, which is public, because that's how financial disclosures work. And Fauci, let it be known that in no uncertain terms, it's not his fault if the senator doesn't know how to Google. Then at the end, the good doctor let his real feelings be known on a hot mic. My financial disclosures are public knowledge and have been so. You are getting amazingly wrong information. So, uh, uh, what I, I cannot find them. Our office cannot find them. Where would they be if they're public knowledge? Se Sen Where? Senator Marshall, Dr. Fauci has answered you. It is public information, and he's happy to give it to you if you would ask. Senator Moran. What a moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, and now that clip lives forever on the internet, the one place where Senator Marshall and his staff will never be able to find it. <laughs> there, is, there is some uplifting news from the world of medicine, because on Friday, in a medical first, a man with a terminal heart disease got a transplant of a genetically modified pig heart. Great news for the patient. 
Now, not only does he get a new heart, but eating bacon is actually good for it. <laughs> and the patient is recovering nicely, and his new heart is functioning and already doing most of the work. Well, I'm pleased to say the patient is doing well. The only downside, I'm afraid your father is no longer kosher. <laughs> the procedure was a massive scientific undertaking, for starters, to suppress the immune system and prevent rejection. Doctors made 10 genetic modification on the pig heart. Amazing! But you gotta be careful when you mess with pig DNA. We all learned that from the movie Jurassic Pork. <laughs> Big news for our friends across the pond in the UK. They'll soon be celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee, and Britain is pulling out all the stops to mark the Queen's 70 years on the British throne with pump, pudding, and parties. There's even a very popular plan to launch Prince Andrew into the sun. <laughs> now, he doesn't sweat. Now, this is a big deal because no British monarch has ever spent 70 years on the throne before. The closest any British royal has come is Queen Victoria, who ruled for 63 years, which explains the new royal commemorative China. Suck it, Vicky. <laughs> While her anniversary is next month, it's been announced that the Queen's Jubilee festivities will culminate with a four day long public holiday starting on June 2nd. In fact, People Magazine has already released their commemorative, The Queen Will Definitely Live Until June Issue. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Bradley Cooper. But when we come back, meanwhile, join us, won't you?